Hey, YouTube world. I am back with another video. Today, I want to go over the top bags from big luxury houses that I've been eyeballing for quite a while. I know with my particular channel, I talk a lot about indie brands, contemporary brands, and the mid-range kind of sweet spot, in my opinion. And of course, I do focus on vintage big luxury like Fendi, Cartier, Louis Vuitton, etc., etc. And Shout out to Valerie Z. She asked me recently, hey, what bags have you been eyeballing? Uh, she didn't specify big luxury, but I'm just going to take it away and run with it. So let's just get right into it. I don't really keep up with the big luxury new releases, the latest and greatest much, just because all of the retail prices, I just cannot justify paying that much money just to keep up with the latest releases. And of course, we know quality control is kind of an issue. So that doesn't really draw me in that often, but I do like to browse from time to time. And I have actually 28 bags. I did a lot of window shopping, so to speak. And I try to cover majority of the major brands um, just to kind of give you a little taste of what my style is. And hopefully maybe you'll discover something new. I'm going to go, there's 28 bags here, right? I'm going to go in the order of what attracts me the most. I don't like creating wish lists because when I have a wish list, I tend to just like fixate towards getting that bag. And I don't want to do that because for me, if I'm going to shop savvy, I will want to wait for the right bag, the right combination color, as well as the best pricing. So these are, again, just what, what I've been eyeballing and kind of just keeping tabs on these bags for, for, you know, fun purposes. The number one is going to be the Ferragamo hug bag. I've talked about this bag. The first time I ever saw it was down in Miami and they had a Ferragamo store. I went in there, you know, with zero expectations, kill some time, whatever. And I picked up the hug bag. I had my Birkin with me at that time, and I just fell in love with it. It is extremely lightweight. It is very unique in itself. Ferragamo has this stigma of more mature, you know, not as fashionable, but Ferragamo's quality is fantastic. It's so underrated. And if you want a classic looking bag, I think Ferragamo is a great option. And this hug bag, in my opinion, it's a revamp of what they have done back in a day, which a lot of big luxury houses have done. But I think they brought it to the 21st century and, you know, 2024, this decade, I guess. And I feel like it's got a classic design, yet a very unique twist to it and very modern, so to speak. Number two is going to be Bulgari, the Serpenti bag. Ah, oh, that thing has me in a chokehold. <laughs> I really want a Serpenti bag. And there are so many different co color combinations, different hardwares, different styles. I'm just at a loss. Like every time I see one, it's like, I think I like it, but then it's like the pricing is not right. I did find one that I thought was gorgeous in snakeskin uh, and it's in a rainbow color. I, am I ever going to wear that bag? I don't know. It's hard to match that with an outfit, right? But I, you know, you, you see me in my videos. I wear the same thing all the time, black and white, black and white. <laughs> so maybe it's okay. But I think that is such an art piece and it is gorgeous. I did go recently to the Chicago Bulgari store and I went in just to browse. And then I, have, of course, the sales associate, they're all very delightful to work with. And I asked her, hey, um, would you have this bag in stock? I would love to see it in person. Unfortunately, they didn't, right? And then she's like, I'll go hunting for you, see if we can source it from, you know, the headquarters or whatever it is. She texted me the next day. It's like, nope, sorry, sold out, not producing again. So if I do want that bag, it's going to be from the secondary market, unfortunately. Number three is going to be the Cartier Panther Chain Mini. This is a gorgeous bag. And I think Cartier is so underrated. Yes, they are a jewelry brand. They do make watches and that's what they're famous for. However, I think that we should take a second look at Cartier bags. The vintage ones are beautiful. I, the reason why I want this bag, if I were to buy a brand new one is because I fell in love with the older version. The older version had the, you know, the, the leopard head on there. I think it was just phenomenal. It blew me away because it is so different from everything that you see out there. So obviously with this new modern take to it with the geometric head of the panther panther i call it leopard Did i call it leopard the panther head i think is phenomenal all right you're gonna think i'm a hypocrite because i just released a video saying i'm moving away from louis vuitton it does not interest me well guess what the next four bags i'm gonna talk about that i am eyeballing are from louis vuitton i am such a hypocrite i can't help it but 
this is going to be from the men's collection. So in my defense, I'm going to just call it what it is. <laughs> the Louis Vuitton men's collection, I think is so much better as of right now. And I know there's a consensus out there. There's an increase in, in searching for um, men's collection over maybe it's, you know, Pharrell's new creative directive. And he knows how to cater to the masses as uh, Cassie Thorpe would say. The Keepall Bandolier 25. I've actually, I've been eyeballing this particular one, but it was in the Eclipse monogram a couple years ago, but I was just like, eh, it's just, it's just, it's just monogram. So whatever. I, I kind of like was hesitant about it. And then I was like fixated on it and I forgot all about it. But this particular one I think is quite special because of the color. I've been on a green kick, which is totally not my thing typically. And this is not going to be in your typical monogram or canvas or even Empreinte, which I do like Louis Vuitton's Empreinte. But this is going to be in the Tourion monogram embossed cowhide leather. I think this is relatively low key. And I love how all of the color, it's like a, what do you call that? Monochrome or the entire bag is the same color, including the hardware. I personally have never owned a Speedy. I've purchased Speedies before. I flipped them pretty quickly because I was like, I don't, I don't really like Speedies. And this one would be unique to my collection because of the size, the strap, and the top handle. If I were to ever own a Speedy, it's going to be the, from the men's collection. Technically, it's a key ball, but you know what I'm talking about. It's the same silhouette. So that's the dark green, but I also really like the turquoise. This one is going to be a little bit different because it's not all the same color, including the hardware. The hardware is going to be black, and then the strap is also black. The only worry I have with these two bags from Louis Vuitton is that the hardware is going to wear terribly because the color is not its quote-unquote natural color, and we know that the hardware with Louis Vuitton tends to fade anyway, so this might be even more so if that makes any sense, but I do love the color. I think it's, it is gorgeous. And it's not very like me to go for a pop of color, but when the luggage tag is also the same color, I think if I were to ever go with Louis Vuitton, like a new piece, it definitely would be a special edition such as these. And we see a trend here, right? This one, they call it the monogram bleach coated canvas in ink blue. I love this one. It's a special edition. I think it is an art piece. I can't decide which of the three I would like in the Keep All 25. I think they're all fantastic. Maybe I should go to the store and take a look. I don't know. All right, the next one is going to be Foray Lepage. I think Foray Lepage is such an underrated brand. Um, it's like the little sister, little brother of Goyard. Goyard is like holy grail status when it comes to exclusivity. For La Page, they don't play that game. It is very accessible. They have a website you can buy from. Um, in terms of stores here in the United States, we don't have access to that, which is unfortunate. I personally think they should invest in opening a brick and mortar, at least in New York City or somewhere. But I am eyeballing the Dream Bag 19 in the large scale. It is adorable. It is another iteration of the Speedy, except with a twist. I personally like this bag better than the Speedy because of the handles. It is a wrapped handle that I feel like it's going to wear a lot better. And it's got a little cute, you know, side pocket. If I don't know if that's usable. And then it's got a handle. So it's very different in my opinion. And I think this is just not something you'll see on the street. And it is a very unique print. The next one is going to be Chanel. Chanel, I will always say vintage is going to be better. And... My Chanel collection, I'm very happy with it. It is quite curated. And I think the only item that I'm missing for my Chanel collection is going to be a Chanel mini. I've been eyeballing the vintage. I also take a look at brand new. I'm kind of torn. Should I go vintage or should I go with brand new? The vintage ones, again, as I'm talking here, you'll see photos fly around the screen. The vintage ones is going to be very similar to all of my vintage Chanel bags, right? But when it comes to the minis in a brand new um, design from Chanel, I feel like there's a lot more playfulness. There's a lot more different variations, including this one, the mini flat bag, which I think is just a, I don't know if it's actually a mini, but they call it the mini flat bag. Did they change the name? I don't keep up with Chanel. This is why I don't know. They keep changing the names. But this pink one is adorable. I do like that extra detail that you see on the strap. And it seems like it is quite soft on the underneath of that gold portion of it where it rests on your shoulder. 
I don't know. I, I think uh, fifty seven hundred. I can't. I don't. Uh, I can't spend fifty seven hundred dollars on this bag. But I actually really like this a lot. The next one is going to be Hermes. Yes, Birkin and Kelly's are always going to be on my wish list, quote unquote, my non wish list, but it is my wish list. Those are something I will always work towards. But let's get a little creative here. When it comes to Hermes, that is not an iconic bag. I'm going to go with the Iggy, Iggy, Eggy. I don't know how to say that, but it is the clutch with the Chandon um, detail on the front of the clutch. I think that is such a gorgeous bag. Would I buy this brand new? Probably not, but it is quote unquote a newer design, I think. And this particular clutch is very low key. Like it's kind of a, you know, you know, bag. Honorable mention is going to be the Archon bag. I've mentioned this before. I recently got my uh, Bob Ori bag, the flexi bag. It is quote unquote a dupe of it. I wouldn't want the regular size when it co comes to the Archon bag. I want the petite one. The petite one is adorable. And if it comes in the right color, if it comes in the right, you know, leather, this is not something you'll find on the secondary market just because it is a new release as of this year, I believe. And yeah, would love to get my hands on it. But if I can't get a quota bag, I'll probably want a TPM or an Archon bag. The next one is going to be Celine. Celine has a dear place in my heart. Only the ones from the Phoebe Philo days. The new logo, the new Triumph, I wasn't a fan of, and I feel like their designs in the beginning of the Triumph release wasn't that creative. It's basically your typical bag, slap one of those gold Triumph logos on there and call it a day. But as of recent, they have released a couple of bags that caught my eye, and I did go try them on uh, in store. And it's going to be the large Helios, 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 um, Kerr Triumph bag in obviously the caramel color. This one, I feel like, Yes, it's yeah. one could argue it is a very, you know, typical hobo bag, but I do love how the Triumph logo is not like plastered in gold and it's in your face. It's kind of built into the hobo bag and I think it's gorgeous and I would want it in a large, large bag. The next one is going to be Fendi. Fendi is a love hate relationship when it comes to the baguette. I had the baguette. I still have it. I don't really like using it because I don't know. It's unpopular opinion. Everybody loves the baguette. I just find it really hard to use, especially when the flap enclosure, the magnet, it's not great. It's hard to aim and close the flap bag. Most of the time it kind of just hangs out and it literally flaps around. So I do find that annoying. However, I did see on Cassie Thorpe's recent entire bag handbag collection video, she had the mini Fendi origami uh, bag. And I was just like, she was showing the functionality of it and I got influenced. I was like, ooh, I want that. That seems so cool. That is, in my definition, of design. I'm sure that there are plenty of other bag brands out there that has multi-functionality and of course practicality, but when you can take that kind of functionality and design to the Fendi level, if you're looking at the photos, it actually looks like it's supposed to, right? There's a lot of bags out there that are multifunctional, but when you look at the bag itself and you have to transform to one from one shape to another, it kind of doesn't look right because you know that they, you know, kind of force design <laughs> into the bag on making it multifunctional or multi-shape. Whereas if you look at this Fendi bag, when it's a bucket bag, it looks like it's supposed to be a bucket bag. When it turns into a tote bag, it looks like it's supposed to be a tote bag. That is why I admire this particular origami bag because it looks just very elegant. Um, I would be open to the leather option. I would be open to the Fendi, Fendi, Fendiography, the Fendi print. Gucci, I don't have any Gucci bags. Back in the day, I had one, maybe two Gucci bags. And that's kind of, to me, I still have that stigma. Tell me I'm wrong, but I still feel like I have that stigma where Gucci is a starter brand. Not that I'm too good to have starter brands and I can only buy Hermes. No, not the case at all. But their designs just screams... Gucci, right? And I have been moving away from the logo mania kind of era, so to speak. However, the one bag that I think I really love is going to be the Gucci Bamboo 1947 small top handle bag. <laughs> Let's just call it the bamboo bag. And it is going to be in the large print. Have you noticed there's a, a trend here where I like the extra large print instead of the small print everywhere, just because I feel like it's less busy looking. I don't think I would want this in leather. I know that's shocking to hear. Usually I would go for the full blown leather version, but I think because this Gucci top handle is a revamp of the older version in terms of the 
pigskin um, version, which surprisingly holds their value quite well. I've been searching for those. If I can get a vintage one, I, I still be open to it if the pricing is right. And But if I were to go for a newer style with the updated bamboo top handle, it's probably going to be with this print. But at $4,600, no. No, just no. I can't do it. I don't want to pay retail. The next one is going to be Bottega. Bottega, there's two bags I kind of like. I've been eyeballing. I scroll, I literally scroll through the entire website, every single bag that they have. Uh, same thing for all of these uh, different brands of what we're talking about today. The only thing that really interests me is the stretch, not clutch. The reason why I was gravitating towards it is because I not too long ago bought my Savette Pochette, Pochette, and it was the super long symmetry, um, slim version. The fact that you could fit so much in there and still look like it is a very small clutch just blows my mind. And if you haven't seen that video, go check it out. I show you what fits in there. All of my essentials that normally might not sometimes be pushing it fit in a smaller bag actually fits in that long skinny pochette from Savet, which is why I was like, I think I could do the same thing with the Bottega long knot. And of course, this is one of their iconic bags. So I thought that was a modern twist to it. The next one is going to be Balenciaga. Yes, there's a reason why it's low on this list because it's not like quote unquote a top priority because it is Balenciaga. The reason why I like this Rodeo bag, I saw it on Birkin Boy's channel, go check out his channel. I was like, oh, I love this. This is such a pretty bag. And it does give me the reminiscence of a Kelly bag. And I'm a Kelly girl through and through. The slouchiness, the designed slouchiness of this Rodeo bag. I love it. I love it. And it doesn't have the Balenciaga, like, you know, you know, you've seen Balenciaga. Their bags are so ridiculous, which really makes me sad because I've read up on the history of Balenciaga and they were a very prestigious brand back in the day. But obviously modern Balenciaga has taken it into, I don't know, making the, the Mr. Balenciaga roll over his grave. But this one actually brings back the reminiscence of what Balenciaga, Balenciaga should be. This bag actually brings back the heritage at least the reminiscence of the heritage with Balenciaga, how elegant it looks and the sleek design. Chef's kiss. Don't hate me. If you are new and enjoying this yibber yabbery video, do hit that like and subscribe button for me and drop a comment. For everybody that is watching this, drop a comment. Tell me what you think about the bags I'm covering. Is it a surprise to you that I like these bags? And if you are new here, drop a comment. Let me know you subscribe. Love to say hi to you and welcome you to my channel. Let's talk Mew Mew. Overall, as a brand, not the biggest fan. It's a cool girl brand. I'm not a cool girl and I'm completely okay with that. However, if I were to pick a bag from Mew Mew, like the one and only bag that I found quote unquote acceptable in my style, it's probably the Aventure Napa leather bag. I think this one is pretty straightforward. It's kind of boring, but it kind of is a forever bag, like in terms of the silhouette. So I would be okay with that. Moving on. The sister brand Prada, same thing same consensus, not a big fan. The Amy bag, I, if I had to pick one, the Amy large leather shoulder bag, I feel like this is a completely boring bag, but it does have a silhouette that you usually gravitate towards. It's a slouchy shoulder bag. So that's all I have to say about it. Loewe. I'm torn between the flamenco as well as this XL Paseo, Paseo bag in the shiny Napa calfskin. I actually really like Loewe. I feel like they're very underrated in a lot of ways over the years. Actually, I lied. I feel like their designs back in the day, like vintage Loewe is just like meh. But now that they've got new creative directors and the new designs, obviously the puzzle bag we all know and love, and then they destroyed it by turning it into an edge bag. Their leather is impeccable. I've felt a Loewe flamenco bag. I was just like, oh my goodness. I didn't know leather could feel this good. So if I were to choose a bag that is not the flamenco, I feel like that's a little played out. There's too many dupes. There's too many knockoffs out there that I would actually consider this Passio bag because I think this is a unique design. There is a cost dupe of this, but I've only seen one brand and actually one of my subscribers, one of you reached out and asked me what my thoughts are. And I noticed the similarities. This one's at $4,100. Mm, it's a little steep. Can you see that my excitement has just kind of trickled down as I'm going down the list just because I went from my quote unquote favorites to like less least favorites? All right, Valentino. Oh my goodness. I tried so hard to pick a bag. I'm sorry. I just, 
on their website, there is nothing that interests me. So moving on. And it's the same thing with Versace. Nope, can't do it. I tried to say like, yeah, I would go for the Greca bag because it's got the, you know, Greek logos on there. It's very Greek. It's loud. It's, you know, eh, I just, I, I can't do it. I, I tried. Next one is going to be Dior. Dior. Dior, um, I would say the medium cess Dior bag actually kind of is cool. It's a bucket bag. And I did try this one on when I was in Vegas last year. And I actually like this design. And nobody has been talking about this particular bag. I tried it on. I think it's completely different from your typical Lady Dior, the new canage kind of line totes and whatnot. Dior is being poo-pooed on left and right. So we'll, we'll leave it at that as well. The next one is going to be Chloe. I almost categorized uh, Chloe with Valentino as well as Versace, but I scrolled. I was like, these aren't all terrible. <laughs> I don't like them. But I do like, I was like, ooh, a glimmer of hope because I saw this chain horse shoulder bag in soft leather. They need to come up with better names. Um, but I thought this was super unique. Is this an everyday bag? No, it's not. I love horses. Do I need another shoulder bag? No, but I think this does really focus on the details. They even made horse bit chains for the shoulder strap. I think that's fantastic. And then it attaches to a horse's head, which is kind of odd. But I do like this a lot. I wish it was a different opening instead of the zipper opening. It's not the worst thing in the world, but I think it could have done better if it was a flap open and close. Moving on to Givenchy. Givenchy, never really, I, I really like vintage Givenchy because the, if you ever go explore, and I encourage you to do so, if you ever go explore vintage Givenchy, they were living in 2024. The back pockets, the built-in magnets, all of the little details. If you ever seen a vintage Givenchy, especially like the flat bags, they were ahead of its time. Then they obviously had their Antigona, you know, be their iconic bag and took off. But ever since their iconic bag, they just been really lackluster when it comes to their designs. And I did scroll through it, same, uh, you know, the whole buckle, the whole, no, not my thing. However, when it comes to the cutout bird bag in the Napa leather, I think you see a trend here where I kind of like the statement kind of pieces from these brands. Um, I thought this was super unique and it's really cool. It kind of reminds me of the Etro bag where it's, I forget what it's called, but it's like the V shape and then you open it. That's what it reminds me of except this one's a little bit more elevated. Again, nobody has talked about this bag, but I think it's gorgeous. Moving on to Saint Laurent. Saint Laurent, again, all of their new releases have been the ridiculously big bags. Out of all of them, I feel like I think the Jamie 4.3, oh, just, just call it the Jamie. Why are you calling it the 4.3? I don't get it. This one I think is unique enough for me to want to add it to my collection. I do have a lot of YSL flat bags already. Do I need this? No, I'm just throwing it in there because I wanted to include a St. Laurent bag. But until they come out with like an earth shattering kind of design, I probably wouldn't purchase since I already just got one from um, YSL. If you haven't seen that video, it was at such a good price. That's why I had to purchase YSL because I feel like their quality is top notch. So when it's a good price, and it's kind of different, I'm going to add it to my collection. But if we're talking about regular retail prices or just a little bit retail, I probably wouldn't touch it. Okay, last bag. I talk about Fori Lepage. So I'm going to talk about Goyard real quick. I, I don't know what any of these prices are, but going along with the whole Bottega clutch thing, I think this one's actually kind of cool. This is the St. Honoré trunk. Honoré? Honoré? Honoré. Uh, trunk bag. The one in gold is really beautiful. I don't have any yellow bags. I've only had one yellow bag and I had to sell that one. But this one I think is very unique and it's not the slouchy material. So if you're thinking of the St. Louis bag or whatever the tote bag is called, when it's a hand painted bag and there's a lot of manure, there's a lot of rubbing uh, against the hand painted, um, what do you call that? The monogram? I, I don't know any of these terminologies. What kind of handbag connoisseur am I? But when it comes in a trunk and it is more of a clutch bag and not an everyday bag, I think the paint on this is going to wear very well. You won't see the wear and tear on this bag. This is obviously a statement piece. If I were to ever add a Goyard, which I said I probably wouldn't, but if I had to pick one, I'd probably pick a statement piece from Goyard just because the wear. I'm thinking about these bags, like these thousands and thousands of dollars bags as if they're a necessity. All right, that was a super long video and a very chatty video. I hope you really enjoyed it. Found a couple of new models that nobody really is talking about. 
and you know just at least consider it and kind of look at the design and really just appreciate it as i've said before in the beginning of the video it pains me to purchase retail and just trying to keep up with the latest releases that's not something i do which is why it's kind of hard for me to talk about brand new releases but from time to time i do enjoy looking at the new designs and what the big luxury has to innovate and offer to us Life is hard. I want to help you save time and money so that you can somehow adult easier and hopefully less in retail. I'll see y'all next time.